want to uh, get started. I appreciate y'all being here on uh, May the 28th. This is the last uh, Fridays with Philip for May. Unbelievably, May has already ended. We'll say, um, remember that uh, Monday is Memorial Day. Let me just kind of talk about that for a second. I am an eight year veteran, as everybody knows. Uh, and people like to say on Memorial Day to me, thank you for your service. Well, let's not do that, okay? Um, Memorial Day is for those who were killed in action, to remember those who were killed in action in defense of this country. Veterans Day is for us live veterans, and then Armed Forces Day is for those who are actually still in service. So um, let's keep those straight if you don't mind, that would be helpful a lot. But you know, and, and, and saying Happy Memorial Day to me is kind of like saying Happy Funeral, uh, it's just kind of out of context, so you, you don't want to don't want to do that either. But it really gets twisted up in our society. So I guess I'm on a mission to straighten that out. Anyway, Memorial Day is Monday, and all of our offices will be closed. So if you want to visit a veteran cemetery, then that probably will be an appropriate action. I know the one out on uh, McCrory Lane in West Nashville is actually having a Memorial Day service, which I try to attend because both my parents are buried out there. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. I've got a chat coming in here. Yep. The Greg says, amen. So amen, brother. Okay. Moving on. Um, want to remind you about discoverbenchmark.com. I was just looking at the PL this morning and you know, if you recommend an agent to us, an affiliate to us, and they do join us two months later, you'll get a check for $229. All you have to do is refer them over to Bo Zivak and Bo will follow up with them and get them uh, lined up and, in our, in our pipeline. I was just looking at the PL this morning and realized that month to date, just in May, we have paid out $5,000 in recruiting bonuses. So this is the real deal. It's real money. And you can do that as frequently as you like. So all the affiliates that are good quality people, you refer them to us, we'll take them to the finish line and you can monetize that. I uh, also want to remind you about our affiliated uh, companies, our sister companies, Bond Mortgage and Momentum Title. And also another reminder that they're supporting these companies supports our free technology. Um, so it's uh, helpful if you can utilize them. I'm not going to hold your feet to the fire. I'm not going to crucify you. I'm not going to talk bad about you. I'm not even going to think bad about you if you don't use them. But uh, I am asking that you do at least give them an opportunity. So they do support all of the free technology you see on the screen here. The Dash, Real Scout, MoxieWorks, uh, all the programs we have at Benchmark University dot loop, um, showing time, appointment center plus, home spotter app, all those are provided for by the affiliates that we saw there. So you wanna, wanna try to support them as much as possible. If you have a question or a problem with one of these uh, technologies and you want a one-on-one -on -one session, you can sit down with Charlotte Katz uh, via the support at benchmarkrealtytn.com email. And uh, she also has now, who answers the call for support? I've been showing this slide a couple of weeks now just to kind of get you guys affiliated with who the people behind the scenes are. Of course, Gus is our Director of Products and Services and Charlotte is now Agent Support Onboarding Specialist. So she's happy to sit down with you anytime. You can email her or you can uh, click the link that is now on the dash that says Schedule Tech Support. That will get you on her Calendly, Calendly and get you lined up. Charlotte, do you want to talk about that for a second or just mention that? Sure. Um, I mean, you said most of it, but uh, I'm glad to see that that's up on the dash now as it took a little bit of time. So uh, yes, uh, I do help with any kind of agent tools, uh, assistance with training. If you have questions after attending a, a class or you haven't attended a class yet, I can help with, with um, minor things, diving in a little bit deeper. Um, I can't fix your computer. That would be somebody else, but anything that is agent tools related, yeah. that is uh, all me. So, and if I can't find the answer right away, I will make sure that I find somebody who can and get back yeah. to you. You kind of stole my thunder a little bit there. I was going to say, don't, don't call her <laughs> to fix your old broke down computer. Get that fixed before you call her. Uh, click the schedule tech support. That is Charlotte you're connecting with. And that's the only place that goes to. Um, we don't deal with Outlook. We don't do with email. We don't deal with your computer. We don't deal with the copiers. We have technology people that do, do that. Um, Nobatech are the people that handle that. But for our tools, Charlotte is your person. So you want to click that link if you need some assistance. Most affiliates that have utilized that have found it extremely helpful. And I think you will too if you need the help. So good deal. I've got another chat coming in here. Let's see. 
Uh, yep, and Doug is giving you a testimonial here, Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte was a great help to me and very responsive to my need the other day. 10 minutes and we were done. She's great. Well, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, the other thing you'll see on the dash is a referral network link. And this takes you to the United uh, referunited.com website. We keep talking about this. And we try to cover this every week, but there still seems to be a bit of a confusion on how this works. Um, if you have, and, I, and I've kind of highlighted this, done a little graphics there on your screen, you can see it, the, the letters dancing around. This works point to point as well as outbound referrals. So if you have somebody that's moving from Kentucky to Oklahoma, you can um, go in the system and you can get a listing agent in Kentucky and a, and a buyer's agent in Oklahoma, and you can monetize all that. And previously you did, you were not able to monetize that. I will also say that there was a comment made about uh, they didn't want to use this system because they wanted to stay involved in the referrals. You are involved in the referrals. In fact, the first call you'll receive is from the agent who received the referral. Usually within about 20 minutes of you placing the referral through the network, you'll get a call from that agent on the other side uh, that has received the inbound referral and they will confer with you and they will consult with you and they will keep you up to speed throughout the entire process. So it's not a situation where you're throwing a lead in a bucket and walking away and hoping a check falls from the sky. This is a situation where you're gonna stay involved the whole way through and United is gonna keep, uh, it's gonna backstop that. So if there's a problem, if there is a problem with the agent on the other side and your commission is delayed, your referral payment is delayed getting paid, they will backstop that and they will guarantee that commission so that there is no question about whether or not you're going to get paid. If you send it through their system, you will get paid. And this week I have received a check for an agent through referral every day of this week. And that's pretty strong offering. Uh, so it's live, it's real. Some of them are three or $4,000 and that's three or $4,000 that they didn't have last year when we didn't have this system. So I encourage you to utilize the system, by the way, Philip makes nothing on this other than to help you, help you guys serve your consumer better. So I wanna emphasize that very strongly. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to pick up the phone and give us a call. Feel free to pick up the phone and call United. They are alive people, they're real people, and they're happy to answer your questions. All right, the uh, other thing I'll talk about on the dash, uh, well, there it is, that's the, that's the tile on the dash. You can go refer united.com directly, or you can do go through the dash and you'll be uh, there pretty quickly. I want to talk about Benchmark University for a second. There seems to be a lot of conversation, a lot of questions about where to get videos, these Fridays with Philip videos. What about agent resources? Where do I go get this? Where do I go to get that? When you click on Benchmark University on the dash, you see this screen that you have on your screen right now. Training and events, agent resources, and our CE classes. The CE classes link takes you directly to uh, the CE shop. So if you want to get some CE classes, CE credit classes, that's a quick link. Training and events, we'll talk about in just a second. Agent resources is where you go to find all of our videos and all of our literature and all of our information that you would need to do business under the benchmark flag is there under agent resources, right? This middle tab here in the middle, these are hot links. Training and events is where all of our training and events are, okay? Uh, training calendar for June is really, really full. Uh, it's just amazing. We had a marvelous run of classes this month. Chip taught a class on overcoming objections. Martin Loveless taught a class on luxury home uh, selling. Um, Doug Austin, down in our broker in the Murfreesboro, taught a class on land. Uh, all of it, very valuable information, and it costs you nothing. All you have to do is show up, and some of it is even on Zoom. You can see here that we are doing some stuff in the uh, in, uh, in June, middle of June on Zoom. Um, the two at the top that you just saw, the, uh, the new agent website training, we're gonna delay that a couple of weeks because we've got a lot of technology moving, technological moving parts in the background. We just weren't quite ready to start having those training classes yet. I think Kimberly has reached out to folks that had already registered for those events to say that they are postponed, but if you, uh, you they've been pulled down off the training and events calendar, but you will still see them on the printed calendar. So don't let that confuse you. It's just a simple delay where Philip is want to cross all the T's and dot all the I's and make double dog sure before we pull the trigger and say, yes, we're ready to do this. So we are working through that and Gus is working very closely with the uh, technology people to get those rolled out. 
What I have seen of those are really bodacious. And yeah, that's my techn technological term there, business term, uh, bodacious. Uh, it, it's really cool. You're going to like it. It's a lot more than what we have right now, and it's not going to cost you anything. He's also working on the, the 52 um, week follow up programs that they have. And we're going to do all that at one time, and it's really going to be pretty cool. We got some really cool classes coming up the uh, prospecting with RPR. Is something that we've not really done in the past. So that's kind of a big deal. Uh, we've got two of them there and they are both on Zoom sessions um, on the same day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. So Kimberly started doing that. And um, it really makes it convenient because then if you have a whole day, you can dedicate a whole day to training. Um, we're also offering the contracts class again. Mike is gonna do this um, next month in the Midtown office. We're finally getting the training room back in the Midtown office for a reduced level, but we're still gonna have it live and in person. So if you need some assistance with your contracts, then I would strongly encourage you to, uh, to show up for that class or register for that class and show up. And then uh, most importantly, we have a Jake Mora, attorney Jake Mora, who is uh, one of the attorneys with Momentum Title is offering a 1031 exchange class on the 22nd uh, here in the Cool Springs Training Center. A lot of people ask a lot of questions about uh, 1031 exchanges and we need to, that's a moving target right now. Um, so we're gonna learn a little bit about that from Jake. And then right underneath that, you'll see something about self-directed IRAs from an outside uh, knowledge source there. It is gonna talk about how to manage uh, self-directed IRAs and you know with real estate or whatever other products you wanna do. So. Um, we have really had a lot of good turnout at our classes and I really appreciate it. I think we could do better at our classes, but we're moving right along. Uh, Kimberly, do you want to speak to any of this stuff while I'm on the subject of training? Um, we just, like you said, we've got lots going on. Um, we have had really good turnout. People are really happy when we have the agents come in and talk about their real life stories. So they're pretty valuable. If you can make those classes, please come to them. Uh, our MOXIE uh, tools. I will tell you, if you have not been to any of the MOXIE trainings, we've got the workshops coming up. The feedback that I'm getting about the MOXIE uh, presents and engage is once we uh, finish the classes, people, the feedback we're getting is I can't believe how simple and how uh, easy it is to get a presentation done within five to 10 minutes uh, for their clients and how professional it looks. Uh, you have to overcome uh, that first hurdle of learning it, but then once you get it, it's five, 10 minutes and you've got this awesome presentation. Um, so anyways, please make sure you uh, can attend one of the workshops. You've got three different opportunities in June. Uh, the first one will be at the Chamber in Mount Juliet, then West Nashville, and then we'll have one in Cool Springs. You definitely really want to get uh, this rolling for your business because it, it will definitely uh, help you. Um, we have advanced dot loop we're doing in West Nashville. They do have a small conference room there, but we still have room if you want to come out and learn some advanced tools in dot loop. Uh, I'm doing a contract to close class on June 8th at Cool Springs. That is actually my specialty. I did contract to close um, for almost six years for many different agents. Um, I love teaching that contract to close class. I do know that a lot of agents have um, been doing contracts contracts for years. However, they do it by the seat of their, flying by the seat of their pants. Uh, I do have a system that I can teach you uh, and keep you very organized in that. And then I'm doing, are you ready to start a team again on June 17th uh, at the Midtown office? So I'd love to see you there. We've got lots of great things going on. Again, feel free to reach out to me if you have any suggestions um, for any uh, education classes that you'd like. We're working on getting a social media uh, class for you in July. Uh, we've got a free CE class we're going to be offering in July. I've just got to tighten that up. It's going to be a home warranty one. I think we're going to do it around July 8th. Um, I just have to get confirmation on a few things, but uh, we have a lot of things uh, getting in store for July. So it's busy, busy, busy times in education. I've always wanted to lead with education. And by golly, I think we're doing it. So kudos to you, Kimberly, and everybody that supports the, uh, the workshops, the tools, classes are not just lecture class formats anymore. They're actually hands-on workshops. So if you sign up for one of those, plan on bringing your computer and plan on having your database ready because they're going to put you to work and you're actually going to do a presentation while you're in that class. Yes, please. 
Yeah. Please bring your laptops. Um, yeah. We've actually uh, let you borrow one of our laptops. Uh, so um, please make sure you do bring a laptop when you come. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, cool. Well, thank you. Uh, we got a couple more shots for the free headshots. Uh, so you want to look on the training and events calendar and sign up for those. Uh, they cost you nothing. A lot of you need new headshots, so please sign up. One of the conversations we've been having the last few weeks is um, this product here, the escalation clause that we've been talking about. And this afternoon, you're going to get an email containing this form that you see on the screen. We have created through the assistant, with the assistance of our attorneys, an escalation clause disclaimer and waiver of claims. What this does is gives you the verbiage not to create an escalation clause, but to warn your client of accepting an escalation clause or the use of escalation clauses so they fully understand the dangers and pitfalls of using such a clause. You'll get an email on that from me this afternoon, so be looking for that. I just wanted to give you a heads up that it was, that it was finally finalized and that it's coming your way. So it should be self-explanatory once you get it and we'll move, uh, move forward from there. Uh, we'll be uploaded into the uh, into the documents transaction desk in um, uh, dollars. Yes, yes, but it won't be done today. <laughs> okay, it's it, you know anytime I send a uh, new form to transaction desk, it can take anywhere from three to seven days for them to actually get it up. Dot loop is a little bit faster because we control those forms, but the others it will actually be in the benchmark forms section of transaction desk and dot loop eventually. Uh, okay, so reminder, Clark, uh, Clarksville Satellite Workspace, again, reminder that we're calling it Satellite Workspace, not Office, but it is available for all Benchmarkians to use. It's located there off MLK Parkway, uh, off of I-24, and it's an easy, convenient place to stop and work if you need to. Good looking building. Want to remind you that the uh, key card entry is actually on the rear door, uh, on the back door because of the way the metal frame on the front door works, we couldn't actually mount the key card reader there. So don't be confused by that. Just walk around to the back of the building. You can see the layout here. You see the front door there is at the bottom of your screen and the top doors at the, the back doors at the top of your screen. Just walk right there around there and, and visit. You can see the address there as well. So, all right, moving on. Powerful conversations and concepts, or concepts and conversations. And I, and I think Rick got kicked off the call a while ago. Were you able to rejoin us, Rick? All right, unmute yourself. You're muted. <laughs> there you yeah, are. Yeah, I've been on. I, I got to hear everything. I uh, That's that, uh, that unstable connection, but I got right back on. I got to hear everything you just went through, Philip. Well, good, good. Uh, otherwise, I was going to be kind of, uh, dancing, you know, <laughs> do a little song and dance. Been there, done that. But. Yeah. So, so uh, it's good not to. It's good not to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of folks know your name, but they don't know who you are. So why don't you take just a second and tell us who Brother Rick is? Well, I, I I'm glad to do it. I'm I'm a four four decade long um, experienced, um, professional in real estate business. I started when I was 18. So that give you an idea how, of how old I am. And from a, from a United real estate perspective, I, I will tell you, I'm president of United real estate and chief operating officer of United real estate group, which is the parent company that holds our company. So the company that you are now affiliated with everybody here on this call, has um, uh, has half of the company, a hundred year old, near hundred year old company that's been doing business out in the wide open spaces of America for the last, I think it's 95 years. And then uh, about 11 years ago, we started a company called United Real Estate, which which sought to change the way real estate was done in America by shifting the economic value of the transaction primarily to our agents. As a matter of fact, um, Philip, um, we have a uh, we have a uh, a mission that's called changing the financial trajectory of our agents' careers and sometimes even their lives. And and it, and at this point, this is the fast moving water of the real estate brokerage industry. Because of your affiliation now with United Real Estate, you are good and growing fast. But now you're part of the fastest growing real estate company in the nation. 
So we moved up from 138th position in the country from a transaction count perspective to eighth in the nation um, during 2020. And and I have the I am had the great honor of being in the leadership position for those for that company and our our combined companies. And uh, how's that for a quick intro? That's good. That's good. Number eight. That's I wasn't telling you to slow down. That wasn't my hand signal. That was just saying he said number eight. Uh, no, I thought you were throw, throwing me some gang signs or something <laughs> like that. I don't know if that was the bloods of the Crips, but no, uh, I got I don't it. Know. I don't know. I don't know. Now, I appreciate you taking time out to join us, Rick. I know you're a busy, busy fella. You're traveling all over the country all the time. So United Real Estate has how many agents now? How many affiliates? Um, just, just under 17,000. Just under 17,000. So, and that is what, 500 offices plus? Um, well, if you count Australia and our, our unit there, we're just a little over 600, but we, 500 is close enough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So going, circling back, and this is kind of tying back in, we were talking about Refer United. So that's the network mm -hmm. that we're tapping into with the Refer United network, guys. And I wanted to emphasize right. the size of that and the coverage of that. And even if there is a area that there's not a United office or an affiliated company's office in that area, they can place it. They can still place a referral. So again, I, I'm I just I'm trying to help you guys. I'm not trying to push anything for Philip. I'm trying to help you guys take care of your consumers and take care of your clients. So getting back to Rick. Yeah, you made a you know Philip, you made a great point earlier, um, and that is that we backstop those referrals. And um, I've been in Philadelphia this week, and um, we're doing some important things, onboarding some people into the company. But I. I'll tell you, um, one of the first things that we did is we found we found that an agent had made a referral and hadn't been paid, and we we cut the check to that agent, and we're going to go hunt hunt down the people who can't remember to pay us a uh, <laughs> referral fee. <laughs> and you know, he's he's a he's a young man that's transi transitioned out of uh, military service into civilian life, and this is his very first. Uh, income moment, and uh, we're gonna, we made sure he got the money, and and uh, he'll leave it to us to chase it. Um, I started with the company three years ago, and and one of the things that I wanted to make sure is, um, you know, we are a very growth oriented team. We have a, a United Real Estate's mission to change the financial trajectory of lives and some uh, careers and sometimes lives. That that is an easy to say and a very hard thing to do, as Philip can attest. He, when you build a company that's based on very thin profit margins or very thin margins, um, you have to be very careful about how you do that because you can get upside down pretty quickly. So it's a, it's a worthy mission, but not an easy mission. That the, One of the first things you let off with, Philip, is don't forget about a recruiting. You have a, a way of thanking people for helping you grow. And um, and your, uh, for everybody who's on this call, some 76 of us, um, Please remember to be a, a good ambassador when you see somebody that you think is a good cultural fit and is serious about this business. Um, please make sure to invite them to have the conversation with Bo or whoever else needs to have that conversation with them. Because, because we can, because we get, because we've reached the scale we've reached, it's a whole lot easier to take a little piece of that money, aggregate it up to a lot of a large amount of money and build the tools and services that you're going to start to see very soon. So, Yeah, very good. Very good. And these tools that we're talking about, just so everybody's clear on that too, we were talking about the individual websites. We're talking about the follow-up programs. We're talking about the lead gen capabilities. Those are all coming through United. That is, that is a process and technology that we could not hope to build or purchase on our own based on our thin margins. So were it not for the the fellowship, uh, the merging with United, we wouldn't be able to offer that to you. And I think that's that's going to be huge. I'm just I've seen it, and I'm really amazed at the uh, technology. But as soon as we have it ready to go and refined with our branding, then we'll be rolling it out to you. And Philip, I know I've I've said this to you before, but you, know, you built a fine organization, you and and your team. Um, and um, you had a lot of options about with which company to affiliate. And, it, and I'm going to repeat this probably until I, I'm not talking anymore. But every time somebody votes like you did to join our company, it's an honor. And so uh, thank you all for being part of United Real Estate. There you go. From the man. <laughs>
we're big goal setters, aren't we? Let's talk about goals for yeah, the man. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I got in. I, I I told you I got into the real estate business when I was 18 years old, and how that started was um, I came I came up through my family with great love and lots of values, but not a lot of money, and that that's a bit of an understatement that I won't. I won't go, go into much more than that, but it was, things were very, very thin growing up. And I was dating a girl when I was 16 years old and, um, I was out with her parents. We were going to dinner. Uh, we were in the back seat there in the front seat. And, uh, her dad was a real estate broker. And, uh, I heard him say to his wife, her mom, how much money he made that month. Uh, and he wasn't bragging. He was just kind of having a uh, spousal chat and I got to, I got to hear it. And the number that he made was $2,000 uh, $2, more than my dad made all year, the previous year. And I went, maybe real estate could be for me. And, ding, 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 and ding, 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 ding. Um, but I knew I wasn't going to be able to buy, buy my way into college at that moment. And back then, a lot of people weren't concerned about that. Um, um, so, um, I asked him a little bit later if that would be possible. And he said, you got to wait till you're 18. So at 18 years old in three days, I became licensed, went to work for him. Now I will tell you, I don't know. And I, if anybody's this age on the phone today, I just want to tell you, I can't believe that people listed houses with an 18 year old, but they did. <laughs> um, and, and I was so fortunate to have a great mentor someone who literally, but here's what he said. He said, yes, you can come to work here. I'll sponsor you. Um, but you have to agree to come in Monday through Friday, six o'clock to nine o'clock and call a hundred people a night. And, and what he was very wisely made me do is develop an early, early stage prospecting discipline. So for about a year and a half, anytime I missed a day, he or his manager, it was a tough, um, tough, uh, tough guy uh, uh, said, would find me and say, where are you? You're breaking your commitments. So that routine discipline, having him hold my feet to that fire turned out to be all, make all the difference. The goals that I set um, in the early days, it was just get the hundred calls made. I remember one time I was leaving the office and I, John, the manager said to me, well, Rick, did you, did you talk to a hundred people? And I said, I sure did. And he, I used a cross reference directory. He made me call neighbors to every one of their listings. So if we got a new listing, I had to call around that listing and tell people, we just listed a home in your na neighborhood. And is there anybody that you know that, we, that was thinking about buying a home near you, you know, in your neighborhood? It's kind of a nice way to pick your neighbors. That was the first question I had to ask everybody. So if there was a price change, a new listing, something went on deposit or something went sold, or there was an open house that Sunday coming up on that property, I had to be six to nine, calling that neighborhood and telling them all about it. The court, the prospecting process actually turned into, a, it was my goal, talk to 100. So I'm leaving one night. Did you call 100? I said, I sure did. And he said, let me see. So I pulled out the cross-reference sheet that I was using, check, zero, check, X. He counted them up. He said, you said, it looks like you only talked to 66 people. And I said, yeah, but look, I called 100. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Get back downstairs and call. I, this, is, this isn't about how many times you dial the phone. It's how many times you can ask somebody if they have any interest in real estate. So that was that, that was the environment. Uh, my career, my career number as an agent, growing up through the business. I, uh, you know, because as you prospect, and this is one of the problems with the real estate industry. If you're not if you're not sharp about how you do it, you you do a high level of prospecting. And then you start to get busy. You do CMAs, you go out and preview properties, you go give service to the customer you have, showing houses, open houses, progress reports, price reduction appointments. You're doing all the stuff you need to do to be a, a good real estate agent. But what happens to your prospecting is it starts to go down. Mm -hmm. And so consistency in the business development effort, or what we call prospecting, turns out to be one of the key, the key aspects of whether you're going to make it in the business. So I had index cards. El Marco Red, I put 25, and my goal was Monday through Friday. After about a year and a half of getting browbeat, um, I got uh, I, my my daily contact goal was 25, and I knew if I talked to 25 people, expireds, fizzbos, door knocking, sphere of influence, neighbors to the listing, I would I would have enough 
uh, business coming in constantly to be able to hit my income goals, my listings taken and, and sales goals. And that that was it. But the goal setting process was key, keeping me on track. Lots of distractions for 18, 19 year olds. But um, by the time I was 21, I was six figure income and and well on my way. And that was that was four decades ago. Long time. That, that I learned that lesson yeah. early on too. I mean, that, that exact same thing happened to me. Now I, I came out of it. This is a second career for me, as you know, I spent 20 years in the commercial printing business before I got in real estate. So I had some fairly refined business discipline already, but what I didn't understand when I first got in this industry is the ups and downs, how it ebbs and flows and how we can actually control that. Uh, through prospecting, through keeping our eye on the prize as opposed to keeping our eye on the feet. And I learned that my first year in the business, I had a magnificent January. I had a great February. I think my second month in the business, I closed eight deals in that month, right? And guess what happened in March and April? Nothing. Crickets. Because I had been so focused on, as you said, doing the things that good real estate agents do, taking care of crossing the T's, dotting the I's, I had forgotten the delegation principle, that tasks that are not important for you to do should be delegated to others. And that means paying somebody, but okay, if I had done that in January and February, then I would have had income in March and April and probably would have seen my income go vertical in by May, mm -hmm. I realized that. So all of that is part of the ebbing and flowing and, and it's a mental mindset thing. You've got to stay in the game. You've got to stay, you get down, you need to get busy, stay busy every day. And that's what I tell people all the time is get up, dress up, show up and go to work every day. Don't lay around and wait till 10 a.m. to get started with your day. So kudos to everybody on the call for being here at 9 a.m. by the way. <laughs> you know, a, um, Philip, you, you were talking about, you asked, you, when you talk about goals, that a lot of times I, I'll talk to, in my travels, I'll talk to an agent and say, what's, what's your goal for this year? And they'll say, well, my goal is to do more than I did last year. And, and or my goal, my goal is to do better. And I, I was taught also early on that if, if you use a little bit of a formula to goal setting, it would make a lot of sense. And so that, that acronym SMART, where goals have to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and, and you have to set a time frame. Um, that also turned out to be a pretty good thing. So, you know, say, I, say, that I just, again. say that again, Rick. SMART is what? Uh, oh, yeah. SMART, uh, the SMART acronym relative to effective goal management is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and you have to set it against the time frame. So, like, for instance, if I would have said to anybody, my goal is to have 10 listings when I first started that month, that would have been ridiculous. But a year later, 10 listings per month was my goal, and I hit it 95% of the time. So, um, but so that wouldn't have been realistic in the beginning. So you have to adjust the expectations you have on your, on your output. But anyway, SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time frame associated. And if you manage your goals that way, you'll you'll stay on track. But the nebulous, oh, I'm gonna do a little better. Uh, I want to do better. That 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 kind of is not much of a track to run on. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I hear that sometimes a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I've actually had affiliates that will come in my office and they'll sit down and say, my business is in the toilet and I don't know what to do about it. And what's my first question? What does your database look like? And you can tell by the way they answer that question that they don't have one. And yep. part of this filling your pipeline is staying in touch constantly with everybody you've ever done business with on a monthly basis. Now they're going to die. They're going to move away. People are going to fall off your list. I get all that, but you keep refreshing that list. And when I was selling real estate as a $25 million a year producer, my list constantly was 350 to 400 people every month. They got a touch from me. And from that, I would get eight to 15 closings each month. And that's the way you do it, but you have to work at it. It doesn't just fall from the guy. From the sky, a lot of folks wake up and say, well, I want to do better today than I did yesterday. I want to do better next year well, than I did this year, but I don't know where to go from there. So, Hey, Victor. You know, Philip, this conversation about um, essentially you need to be a navigator, especially when you think about the market today. I I was on a reporter call a couple of days ago, and I and I said, how are your people? How are your company achieving growth? And how are your people doing when, when the inventory across the country is so scarce? And, 
hard to find. And so if you look at Nashville, today there's 45% less inventory on the market than there was a year ago. It's, okay, the greater Nashville market. And Philip, you, you probably have tighter stats than that, but 45% fewer listings. So you go, oh, wow, how can you – how can you do this? How can you increase your income when there's 45% fewer opportunities? That is just not the right question. It isn't how much is gone, it's how much is there. Uh, I'll give you an example. There's 11,000, just over 11,700 new listings put on the market in greater Nashville. The question in the last two months, last 60 days, the question isn't, isn't how much is missing. The question is, what are we gonna be willing to do to Hey, you know what? You should probably can can somebody mute Orlando's? He doesn't. He doesn't know we're actually listening in on his conversation. Yeah, I got him. I got him. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, cool. So there's um, so in the last two months, over over you know eleven thousand seven hundred new listings. The question is, how are we going to navigate to help those listings find us? And and. And, you know, I went through a period of time when interest rates, I, my grandfather didn't think it was smart for me to go into real estate. And then a couple months after I got in, interest rates popped up over 10 percent. He literally called me to quote my grandfather. What are you going to do now, smart guy? <laughs> <laughs> I love no, that positive nobody, reinforcement. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, old school, you know, carrot or stick. Um, yeah. But they but they. Um, but nobody could buy a house over 10. Well, that wasn't even close to the problem. They were on their way to 21% prime and 18% no, VA loans. But we still sold houses. You just had to change the way you work. So whatever this market's throwing at us, uh, uh, scarce inventory or, or, or not, we just have to adjust our sales to the wind and, and find a way to have those listings find us. And that is, you know, obviously, and going forward, it's going to be, it's going to be the same way. I want to comment quickly on the new construction market because there's a lot of conversation in the world about new construction helping the helping uh, solve the inventory problem. So, guys, here's an example of getting clear about the market. New construction varies, of course, as percentage of the total market market to market, but across the country, it's about 20%. It will be about 20% this year. 20% of the new uh, of all homes sold will be new construction. Um, barring any black swans or really serious changes, that'll be about it. So two out of 10 will be new, eight out of 10 will be resale. No matter, and that's, that's as good of a new construction market as this country's ever seen. And it's as good as it gets. So new construction will never be able to replace what isn't being put on the market now. Um, the real challenge that, that the, 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 the we say that, that the national real estate market has a structural defect. And people say, yeah, no inventory. That is not the structural defect. The structural defect is the fact that for the last 10 or 12 years, 10 or 12 years, people have been walking into real estate agents' um, um, lives and saying, find me what I can afford to buy. At 3% interest, people were buying 400 and $500,000 and $300,000 houses for their first and second home. So what happened is, starting about 12 years ago, people started buying the house that would meet their first, first time buyer need, their second time buyer need, and their third time buyer need. So they satiated their house moving needs because of the artificially low interest rates. Wonderful. They got everything they needed, but now they're hanging on. They got the square footage, they got the neighborhood, they got the school system, and they don't have to move to get it. That's starving the bottom end of the market from the yeah. normal churn and the move up. So here's an example. If you tell somebody inventory is short, that's great. If you, but if you can explain why that is, if you can explain why that is, you, you add a lot more credibility to your to your uh, and uh, to your expertise when you're when you and you build confidence that way. So for for 10 or 12 years, people have been buying a lot more house than they could ever ever have afforded if those interest rates were five, six, and seven. And as a result of that, um, they're just sitting on the houses because they don't they don't have a appetite to move most of them. Well, talked about this a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about the reasons for today's markets, and that was what you just said was one of the main reasons I identified is the historical average of mortgage rates in this country is 7.87 percent. 
and we've got an entire generation now of the last 10 to 12 years that if it goes above four, they think body parts are going to drop off. And that's not how the right. real world works. So what we've done with this yeah. cheap money is pull that demand forward. And now we're facing the consequences of that. But as Rick says, as you say, Rick, your, your explanation to just say, well, it's cheap money. That's not sufficient explanation. You have to go further and explain why it has and people are staying in their houses longer because they were able to buy more houses, back, more house back then. And that's key, explaining this. One of the questions I got asked recently, Philip, is one of the top three things that people need to do to be successful in today's market. And it's the same thing I've been saying for 20 years. So please don't ignore it because that's 20 year old answer because the fundamentals don't change. Tactics change, you know, but fundamentals don't. So my, my three, the three top things that I always say people need to do is the first is prospect daily for business. One of the things my mentor, my boss, my, my broker said to me when I first got in was you can't, you can't, you can't miss Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and make it all up on Thursday, Friday. You you might make the calls, but you're not going to get the spaced interval and learning that takes place over, over doing it incrementally. So prospect daily for business, whatever your number is, Put it out. I put those on index cards on my mirror, my dashboard inside my, my folder, made sure I didn't, my head hit the pillow, I talked to 25, and if I didn't, I felt a little queasy, and if I did, I felt really like I was navigating my future. Prospect daily. The second thing is, um, in all things, be authentic and act with high integrity in all things, all things. It doesn't matter how little it is, how a little of a detail, just make sure that it's authentic and it's super high integrity. You're dealing with co brokers you're dealing with buyers, sellers, vendors, every year colleagues um, inside uh, Benchmark. Uh, act with extreme integrity and authenticity and develop it. Uh, your brand should carry that message. And then the third is master your craft. Um, mastering your craft is found in the details. And if you do that and can articulate it with buyers and sellers, you'll, you're going to have a, a whole lot faster track to building trust and confidence. And, 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 you know, I remember people used to, I, when I was selling, I never listed a house for less than 7%. And we were in a 7% market and sometimes people discounted to six or sometimes they were five and sometimes they did it for 1995 flat fee. Um, but I never listed a property for less than 7%. In essence, I never took an under market under, under, I never cut the commission to get the listing. Um, but in order to do that, you had to be articulate. So somebody would often ask me, what is the difference between you and they'll, they'll do it for six. And I said, well, if that's, if that's what you want, there's the yellow pages. I'll help you. I'll circle some for you. And I'll, I'll find them for do it, do it for less. But let me tell you why paying me a little more will net you a lot more. And, and having the ability to have that conversation. So something super simple is, on in average, in, in in the last 12 months, the list price to selling price ratio was down to 96.5%. My personal track record was 987 So by listing with me and doing business with me, paying me maybe 1% more than you could get somewhere else, you'll probably net at least a 1% higher price. That's what, you know. And what you do is you just have that confidence. But that's mastering your craft, being able to understand, being able to teach someone the reasons why. It's not so much that they're going to ever use all that information. They just want to know that you know it. So, mm -hmm. Exactly. Sorry, Phil. You no. asked me one question. I talked talk for an hour. Oh, that's good. Let me, let me circle that back around and wrap it into what we do here at Benchmark so that folks can have tangible tools to follow the three most important things to do. Okay, starting in reverse order. Master your craft, right? So what are we teaching? Classes, 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 more classes overcoming objections, we're offering tools, we're offering training on a regular basis. Look at our Zoom calendar. So master your craft, know your numbers, figure that out. If you can't figure it out yourself, sit down with your principal broker and help them figure out what your numbers are. Um, so make sure that you're able to not only master it, but communicate that you have a master of it. And that, that's huge. Uh, the next one, be authentic in all things. What does our vision statement say? We will deliver 110% of our clients' expectations in every real estate transaction. That's the number one of Benchmark's vision statement that you all agreed to when you, when you came to work here. Uh, and then prospecting daily. If you've not seen Moxie Engage, 
and how it forces you to stay in flow and will actually literally browbeat you until you make the calls. It's the number one thing that I hear from folks. Well, I just can't seem to get on track with making the calls. Use the tool, Moxie Engage. It will help you. It will guide you. It will remind you to, to actually make those calls every day. And if you do, then you'll see a tremendous uptick in your productivity. So that plays right into what you said. So I, I hate to be a little self-serving there, but I wanted to throw a pitch for our tools out there as well. Well, you know, Philip, that was one of the coolest things about finding you guys and having you say yes to us. Um, our, our values, it seems like our core operating principles are so well aligned. Um, you know, it's just, it's just one of the real benefits of alignment. You know, I, Realogy has a way of buying companies. I, for those of you who don't know Realogy, they own Century 21 brand, Caldwell Banker, ERA, Better Homes and Gardens, and Sotheby's. And when they'd factor in what they call mergers, they, there's a line item called breakage. Yeah. Literally, yeah. in the pro forma, how many agents are we going to lose when we bring our two companies together? And those numbers, you know, 15, 17, 18 percent. My goodness, when you factor in, I, I remember being in a conversation with them one time, and I said, you realize you're talking about 18 percent of 1,000 people. That's 180 people who you're affecting their lives in a negative way. You can call it breakage if you want, but we don't, we don't do that. Hey, um, I want to tell you a quick story, Philip, about that. You were talking about MoxieWorks. In a short while, you're going to have uh, Bullseye Cloud version 1.0 delivered to our agents, and, and they're going to have, um, it's going to have basically three areas of functionality initially. We do not want to turn on the proverbial fire hose because you, you're busy, you're, you're doing your, your, your practice in real estate. We're going to give you, kind of dole it out slowly, but just listed and just sold cards. That's, think about my upbringing. That's one of the first things I brought to the company is let's get an automated way to tell the neighborhood that we just listed a house or we just sold a house. So you're going to have the ability to go on Bullseye, click a button, tell the system that, yes, every time you get a listing, you want 100 cards or 50 cards or 200 cards to go out to the neighborhood. It's designed so you don't have to think about it every time you get a listing. It's 100% fully branded to you, your name, your con contact, your cell phone, your email. And that way, every time you get a listing, you're busy getting listings and servicing people, but your prospecting doesn't quite shrink as much. So we, tech, we use technology to raise that up. Um, Philip, you said it before, just so you know how well aligned our values are. We do not make money selling postcards to real estate agents. <laughs> <laughs> we have no interest. Okay. In, I've seen the in numbers. That. I know you know. <laughs> you know, yeah. We invested a hundred grand in the portion of that program to make it automated. So if you click a couple of buttons, tell them how many cards you want, what size you want, jumbo, regular, whatever. You every time you get a listing, you know you your head can hit the pillow and say, you know what? I, I put a listing in the system today. Another hundred cards are going out. Um, I was talking to somebody a few weeks ago, and here's what she said. She said, Ricky, I said, are you using just listed cards, just sold cards? She said, no, I don't. I don't use just listed cards because, you know, how fast the market is. I don't have to spend that money in order to sell that listing. I said, well, of course you don't. Well, you know, listings are selling in hours. You don't have to do that. But what you do want to do, it's not about that listing. Get more listings. It can. It, it's about the next listing. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, when COVID hit, um, when COVID hit, I started working from New Orleans. I live in New Orleans and Dallas both. I started, um, I, we started, the club was closed and I started working out by getting back on the bicycle with the family. So we took long bike rides. Well, we pulled out of my driveway, turned right, went down towards the cul-de-sac, the end of the cul-de-sac, and, and about three houses down, two houses down, there's another little mini cul-de-sac, and there was a house that went up for sale, Full, a sold sign, I mean, a for sale sign was on it, and it's a house that I always wanted to buy, okay? Just a great little investment, classic, smallest home in the neighborhood, so it was going to be a good investment for me. And aside from that, I have a special needs son, he has intellectual disabilities, and I thought if there's ever a moment where he could live independently, it might be in that house, you know, a few doors down from mom and dad, and, and we could keep a watchful eye, and, and so we, I wanted this house. So I 
jumped off the bike, for sale sign, called the agent, said, hey, Carol, it's Rick. We know each other. She works for a different real estate company in, in New Orleans. I said, hey, it's Rick. Um, just I'm out in front of the house. Can you tell me what it's listed for? She said, oh, yeah, Rick, I can tell you what it's listed for, but it already sold. And I said, you're kidding. Oh, no, you're kidding. Um, well, I said, I, you know, we had a little more conversation. I said, if anything happens, the sale falls through, let me know, and I'll be your next customer. And, she's, and I said, uh, oh, Rick, I didn't sell it. She said, I didn't sell the house. I thought she sold it. She said, no, I, somebody else at CB sold it. I said um, to myself, I hung up, and I thought, here's a woman who could have had a double-sided transaction that all she had to do is send my house a postcard. That postcard would have cost her 50, 60 cents or whatever, fully delivered, and she would have had a double-sided, would have paid for postcards the rest of her career. But she didn't do it. I mean, yeah. continuing on down the street, there were four other properties for sale because I don't go to the end of the cul-de-sac very often. I, there were five houses on my street at the beginning of COVID that I had no idea were listed because nobody sold, sent just listed cards. We talk about how to cut through the clutter and prospecting. Whatever you're doing, don't miss the opportunity to promote yourself to the neighborhood surrounding your listings. It's, it's super important. So you're going to have that opportunity to participate in that program. Um, we supplement the cost. We automate the process. And, um, and you know, it's obviously your option. It's your business. But I would not go another day without making sure I maximize my business opportunities from the neighborhood surrounding my listing. Um, yeah, and that's just the distance can, to just sold postcards. We're talking about prospecting, and I mentioned earlier about staying in touch with your database, staying in touch with people, and you've got Moxie engaged, but you also have, a fit, under this uh, program with Bullseye, a 52-week automated follow-up program that they yeah. will actually touch your clients that you put in the database one time a month. Yeah, that's it. Weeks, one time a week for 52 weeks. 49 touch is what it is, over 50. No, it, hey, no, no, no it's, it's, the numbers are a little twisted, but Philip, it's 42 touches over five year period. There okay. you go. Okay. 40, so NAR has another statistic. They do this buyer seller survey every, every year, or now it's about every two years. The last one they did reinforced again. 85% of the people who sell a house this year will not use the agent that sold it to them right. years back. And the number one reason that they, the, buy, the sellers of property say, guys, did you hear that? 85% of the time, the seller's not using the same agent who sold them the house to begin, to begin with. So we're reinventing our business constantly. And um, now, some of you on this call, because you're on the call, because you have a propensity to want to sharpen your saw, as Stephen Covey says, and because you have a propensity to develop your business, you, you probably don't fit this category. But the number one reason they say that they didn't use the same agent is they didn't know where they were and couldn't quite remember who they were. Didn't say in touch. president didn't stay in touch and so we we grind we we negotiated the living daylights out of this company called cpi we put it all through bullseye we supplemented the cost so that you can have a 40 for 49 50 for, call it 50 bucks for 50 bucks when you have a closing you get them put it again it's all branded to you we don't have any interest in in your customers literally nothing besides partnering to help you keep them is um, for 49 dollars and 50 cents you get a five-year 42 touch stay in touch program so here's what people don't get about the stay in touch when you fail to get their repeat business you miss the holy grail of our business which is referral business that's right um and and so please, if if you did, heard nothing else from what I talk about, when we launch Bullseye Cloud, do some clicking around in there. Decide on whether you have the money to do fifty bucks an eight uh, a customer for for your buyer customers. Decide whether you have the money to do and they want to make the investment um, in prospecting. Automate the process on your just list and just sold cards. Uh, but if you you know gun to my head, you tell I me mean, what would you spend money on today? I would spend money on sphere of influence marketing and and neighbors to the listing. Yeah, that's that just question, not rooted. Yeah, that's yeah. the question I was going to ask. If you, if you had a thousand dollars, so here's a tangible takeaway, y'all. <laughs> get a thousand dollars 
Rick, what would you recommend they do with it? Um, the first thing is you, you, you called it a database. I do too. It's a database. You, I would have my database tightened up and, and have a sphere of influence list. And it's not a database until you have four pieces of information. You have their names, their home address, their phone number, and their email address. If you have those four pieces of information, that's a record in your database. I would have that record, I would have my database buttoned up tight and a process for adding to it constantly. And then I would spend money marketing to them. Okay, yeah. that's number one. The number two, I would absolutely have just listed, just sold, and um, client follow up. And if you did just that, um, now you said, well, what about social media? Yes, if you have, a, if you have uh, social media groups developed, um, then you know I don't know why people say on the day you die if you can, if you have if you can count five if you five friends uh, that you know you're you're a lucky man I, I have five thousand friends on Facebook <laughs> <laughs> no, no those are you know those are acquaintances but yeah um, I maybe. would if you have a a pretty yeah, maybe no I do every time somebody uh, Facebook friends me I say um, hi. Uh, hi, Lisa. How do we know each other? How is it we know each other? I don't let people in unless I actually know them. But I would, so sphere of influence, database intact, and, and market. I would do just this to just sold client follow up. And if there's anything left on that thousand bucks, Philip, I would say, um, I would say, do targeted brand marketing to your own friends group. Not helter skelter mass marketing. That's dust in the wind. I would I would put messaging about your expertise in front of the people who already know and, and trust you. So, how many people do you think? How many affiliates or agents in the in the world do you think get those three things in reverse order? Oh they want man, to go for I, the target marketing first, and then they think about maybe just sold, just listed, and then as a last afterthought they think about their database yeah i don't know the number no way to guess but the the thing that i would say is it's unfortunately it's the majority yeah yeah you know? yeah don't don't spend I, I i absolutely abhor keep up with the real estate joneses if xyz <laughs> company did it we better do it too yeah um yeah. So, folks there's a lot of companies when this when this market gets back to normal size and shape there are a lot of companies that uh, aren't going to be here. It's just Warren not Buffett? profitable. The Warren Buffett said, "When the tide goes out, you can see who's been swimming naked." Yeah. You betcha. Yeah, and, the, and they're out there. Yeah. Think about Compass and think about these companies that are, are doing loans to real estate agents to have them come work here, giving them commission splits that make absolutely no economic sense. And what's going to happen when when they have to make that make sense? You know, agents are going to get hurt. Um, and the companies, the company, there's a company that went to Wall Street and they lost $280 million last quarter. Last quarter. What? Last quarter. Yeah. What? <clears throat> uh, who's going to fund those losses over time? You know, I just, yeah. doesn't make sense. I don't want to sound old fashioned. So, but I, I believe in social media. I believe in branding yourself. That's a super effective way. But again, get your fundamentals in and lock down tight database, just listed, just sold, and client follow up before you start spending money on, on on other things. So you got a you got a pretty strategic view of the forest uh, in in the real estate industry because of where you sit and the connections you have and the people you know. So I've got to ask you a sixty four thousand dollar question here: Is is Zillow going to put us out of business? <laughs> Oh, Philip, you are a bad. You're a very bad man, Philip. <laughs> uh, okay, do me a favor. I'm going to go right. This is a business meeting, right? We're all business right. people. Right. But now, now I'm going to protect the company. Would you mind pausing the recording? Sure. <laughs> Figure out how to do it here. Hang on. Yeah. And, you know, you're right on. Uh, the truth about competition is it makes you uncomfortable, but it makes you sharpen the saw and it helps you refine your processes. This is your business, folks. It's your business. 
Now, you can also say it's your business to lose, and failure to communicate your expertise and stay in touch uh, gives somebody the right to step in between, and then they get the right to charge you whatever they want to give you the customer back. So you become the gatekeeper. Uh, don't, they, they don't let somebody yeah. else become the gatekeeper of your livelihood. If you do that, yeah. that's on you. That's not on somebody else. Yeah, yeah, right on, right on. So, okay, we beat that horse pretty hard now. What else you want to talk right. about, Rick? You want to open up? Wait, well, let, well, let's hear. Do you got? Yeah, you guys asked some questions. I one of the hard parts about growing uh, when you you know is staying in touch, and we're a servant leadership uh, style operation. So frequently, I get introduced as we're honored to have the president of the company here. And the truth of the matter is, I'm honored that you would take the time to be here with for this call. But I want to be here. Any questions you have regarding buyers, sellers, marketplace conditions, I'm here for you. Uh, just you can unmute your phone and ask, or you can send it send it in through the chat. And it I, I feel if I'm must have been an interesting conversation because unlike my meetings, only one person's dropped <laughs> off. So <laughs> oh. I'm usually down fifty percent well. by now. So you must be having some attraction here. So y'all y'all open it up and let's get some questions going here. If anybody has anything they want to ask the man. The man. The man. There you go. Is, it, <laughs> is the silence because um, because everybody's being polite, or I, I put everybody to sleep? Uh, maybe you intimidated them. I don't know. <laughs> oh no, no. You know, um, people people frequently ask what drives me, and, and I, you know, I'll tell you that um, whether. Uh, well, okay. So the other night I was in the office in Dallas, and um, I was I was having a meeting. I'm interviewing somebody uh, for a position in the company, and it's eight o'clock, and we finally leave. And there's a guy in there, and he's sitting, and he's just he's just kind of excitedly being there, and, and I introduced myself to him, one of our agents, and he's just came from a competitor that we we take a, we get a lot of agents from, and. And uh, he he got his first check as a as a uh, United Real Estate person, and and Philip, you were one of the early pioneers of this concept, so you know what I'm going to say. And he's looking at that, and he happened to need a check, an actual physical check. So he got his check, and he's looking at that check, and and it was absolutely astounding to me because I know this model, I know it really well, and yet when I see it agent who's excited about the difference between what they would have had at their last company and what they had at this company. It, it's just, it's what drives them. It drives my, you know, it motivates me. And he was so excited. He said, um, this is how they talk in Dallas. He said, Mr. Rick, um, um, I just cannot thank you enough. I just met the guy, right? I, mean, he doesn't, I can't thank you enough. Do you know what this check would have looked like if I was with my last company? And I said, yeah, probably a little less, right? He said, no, 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 a lot less. Let me tell you what that means to me. He said, um, uh, my kids are in private school and my tuition is due for one of them. And I was like, you know, that talk about making it tangible. Yeah. So, you know, if, if, if you guys, you guys can help us be, ask somebody in the next week to come talk to Bo and, or your principal broker and, and, and if, if you think they'd be good for our company, just just invite them on in and have the conversation and see if we can help keep this growth growth rate happening. We had, uh, we had, I, I'm glad to hear you say that, Rick, because that is actually something that I say frequently and people just kind of, I've said it so often, they kind of dismiss it, of what a charge it is when you see an agent walking out of here. They don't walk out, they float out. They're about two feet off the ground. When they're walking out, we had one the other day, a $12 million sale. The commission check is going to be $300,000. <laughs> and, and she's a plan A agent. So we're getting 150 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get but, a loan from her? For <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Are you talking about changing lives? And I say yeah. it to my brokers all the time. That's what we do. We change lives. So it's all about the, uh, <clears throat> maintaining the integrity and changing other people's lives. What we do is very important. What we do is the highest, should be held in the highest regard of any profession out here because we are changing lives and that deserves doing it the right way. So 
I'll get off my soapbox, but you kind of hit, you kind of hit a hot button for me there, Rick. <laughs> yeah, no worries. No worries. Glad to, I'm glad to hear it actually. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's uh, hey, guys. coming in here that, that having this conversation with you helps them understand why we partnered because we are so much culturally aligned. And that is absolutely true. Um, I have to tell you guys something I've done um, in the last eight years. Now, I, I want to tell you something else. I get to be the president and I get to be on this call, but I have a team of people. We have a team, a guy named Dan Duffy, who's our CEO. And and I, I, I don't just say this. I, I, nothing, I gain nothing by saying it. He is one of the most articulate um, uh, uh, he is such a his mental acuity about creating value, enterprise value, capital market structure, how to grow a company, and yet he's so completely grounded in making sure that we do that values right, that we stick to it, not just say it but live it. Uh, so he's a special person, and I've been at this four decades, and I was part of an organization called the Realty Alliance for 20 years, uh, 25 years. And that's the top 100 real estate companies in the country. Nobody's got a Dan Duffy, guys. I know these people really well. The second thing is uh, we have a chief technology officer that is um, a brilliant strategist, and he's executing the delivery of a technology stack that that is cost effective, doesn't pirate your leads and listings away. And then, um, and so we have a CFO that manages really well. So to be able to bring that rare assemblage of talent together and say, I get to be president. Make no mistake about it. We have an incredible team at this company. Um, at the leadership level, um, it's pretty spectacular. And I think ultimately that'll, that'll help us have the different differentiating qualities to grow out into the future. But we were fortunate to find you guys and in, in the high bar standard that you set for the industry is super important. So, and we're all um, getting together in Denver next month and hammering it out and solving the world's problems, aren't we, Rick? Yeah, we got a strategy session in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and um, that's going to be a blast. Um, and, you know, it'll it'll be a moment where we get to take a deep breath and just slow our roll to get some white space and create a think time. Um, so that's going to be that's going to be great. That's cool. We, we did have a question come in here, and this probably is addressed to uh, all of us, actually, but you can kind of have your input. Um, how long do you think this market's going to last? The craziness that we see today. You got a you yeah, end point yeah. in mind on that? Yeah, I do, actually. You no, know, I have some ideas, but remember that uh, a couple of things about this market that you should know. Everybody asks me, is it a bubble? Yes, it's a bubble, but it's not a credit bubble like it was in 2008, 9, and 10. This is not cheap and easy, easy money. For any of you who weren't in the business then or didn't really dig, uh, dig into the reasons why the real estate bubble broke and it, the markets crashed, um, there were these things called lender lo liar loans. And lenders would make loans where you didn't verify income, didn't verify source of funds, and you didn't verify much about that buyer whatsoever. Literally no employment, no income, and no deposit verification. They were called yeah. liar loans because – What were they? Yeah, Nina. Yeah, Nina. No income, no asset. Yeah, I, that's right. They were no income, no asset. And Nina is what they kind of jargonistically call them, but then the world called them El Nino loans later because it blew <laughs> right. up the, the – it created a, a god-awful storm. Anyway, so guys, what happened was cheap and easy money fueled a feeding frenzy. And 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 what happened is if, if, if uh, somebody out in California is getting a loan, by the way, some of those folks are finding their way back to Nashville now. You, you may have noticed. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> Mr. Rick, or Mr. Haas, do you make one hundred ninety thousand dollars a year in household income? Yep, I sure do. Good, because that's what you need to make to be able to qualify for this loan. The loan closed. Why the bank didn't care is they'd sell it off into the secondary market. Number one. Number two, if they had to take the property back, the appreciation rate was so ha so so fast, they were able to sell it for a profit and not have much of a ding into their system, but they got paid to make the loan to begin with. So front-end fees, terrible credit, and then Wall Street did a shell game to get them sold into the secondary market as first um, uh, AAA-rated securities. That doesn't exist. Today, here's an interesting point, simply put. The credit scores of loans that closed in the last year are 104 points on average higher 
and the credit the credit scores that were being made leading into the bust before. The people who are closing on loans have jobs, have down payments, and have the ability to repay the loan. The second most important thing that you'll, you, 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 I can tell you about that is we have never had a period of time in America, this is it right now today, it keeps going up, where the equity, to, uh, the equity in the home has never been greater. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're actually teaching a short sale and foreclosure class all around the country now. We're doing it through the web, so you'll watch for that to hit. But the, 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 it's, it's only to get people acclimated to helping people who are in a state of default. There's 4.4 million people that are in a state of more early default, meaning they missed their first payment, or are in mortgage forbearance. As soon as the mortgage forbearance uh, ends when foreclosure moratorium ends, those people, if they're still out of work because of COVID, they're going to need to sell their house. Only this time, they have tons of equity in the house to be able to to sell it. Foreclosure, um, this is my cry for uh, what we can do as a company. With all that 4.4 4.4 million divide by 50 states, and you see there's a lot of inventory that could end up on the market. There's a lot of inventory that could end up on the market, and 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 if and if that happens, it'll solve some of the the inventory starved issues, uh, slow the appreciation rate. So when will it end? I think it. I think that. Um, the Fed is in no hurry to raise the interest rates. I think we're starting to see, at, literally in the last week, we've started to see that inflation is transitory. It's going to be here for a little while, but it's going to calm down. The Federal Reserve is not going to push the mortgage interest rates higher. Um, and if they do, they're very attuned to not moving them much. The, the rate of interest rate increasing will be very, very slow. They don't want to shut the economy down. So I think we're in for a really, really fast ride, good ride until the end of 2022. And then it, it depends on how how we have to pay back these trillions um, and, w- and whether, you know, corporate tax structures or personal um, um, personal taxes uh, are going up. Cat, personal taxes, on capital gains is what yeah, I'm looking gains, for. Yeah. So, yeah, capital gains um, rate slows. If the economy ends up having to be slowed down in order to get the, some of the debt reduced, then, you know, maybe by end of 2022, we'll be, we'll be in a slower, slower period. I will tell you, on my mirror, in, in my mirror, uh, literally still do the mirror trick, but on my mirror in New Orleans, I have this thing that says, be a navigator, not a victim. No matter what happens with this marketplace, we are going to navigate it. You know, when interest rates were at 18%, I hired my sister. She went down to the town hall and poured through every recorded deed to find VA loans so that because VA loans were assumable. And my farm area became every VA loan in the region I served. Guess what? Every time we put a house on the market, they could do cash to mortgage and have an assumption my property is sold and they sold for a premium because they were assuming a low interest rate. Mm -hmm. Um, So we can navigate anything that comes our way. so but how long? Down. My guess is 2022. Yeah, modifying adapt. Whatever, whatever happens, whatever comes our way, modify and adapt and continue to move forward. Uh, yeah, modify and adapt. Yeah. Any other, Philip? Are there any other questions or? I think we're. Uh, I think we've got them. Most. Uh, Doug wants to argue about. Uh, Doug Drake wants to argue about inflation, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> that's a. That's a. We could be here for three hours arguing about that. Um, you know the. Wait, wait. Like, is he is he saying that inflation never goes away? Exactly. Yeah, it's never transitory. Yeah. Hey, hey. yeah. I. Uh, oh, did he say that really? Yeah. 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 So kudos to you because over our lifetime, inflation's always present. The only question is what at what rate. So. Uh, well stated, Doug. Yeah. Well, it is, and uh, you know, it, it also depends on how how far they continue to devalue the dollar by creating more out of thin air. I mean, all these all these factors come together, and this is what I've been trying to tell you guys over the last several weeks, and that's why I've been doing this on Fridays and bringing Rick in, who's a much greater expert than I am. That you have to deal oh, with the reality, and the reality is that it is a changing fluid market. 
the days of rolling out of the rack at 10 a.m. and making $300,000 a year in this business are over. Y'all need to burn that in your brain. You're going to have to get up, dress up, show up, and go to work every day and focus on your clients and, and your consumers. So maybe you're not going to you have know, to. You know, I got to I got to believe we're preaching to the choir because these, I know, these I are know. the folks that are here, right? <laughs> hey, you have, we have 1,400 agents and there's about 75 on the call today. Yeah. So yeah. go figure. This is go figure. <laughs> And usually by now, half of them are gone anyway. So it's okay. I mean, we, we're, we're talking to the choir. You're exactly right. So I'll, I'll get off my soapbox. Rick, it's, we're getting on to about an hour and a half now here. So let's oh uh, let's finish it up. And if anybody has any more questions, now would be a good time to hit us because I'm fixing to uh, to close it down. Um, got um, a lot of good compliments and a lot of appreciation for you being here today, Rick. And we will actually glad to be here. dialogue and some point in the future, y'all, we're going to have a big get together on a national basis. And um, at that point, everybody's going to be invited. Of course, it's not going to be free, but you'll get invited to it and you'll get to meet uh, Mr. Rick in person. And he's in and out here a lot. So, you know, whenever y'all catch him, catch him and he'll always, he's a real guy. He will have a conversation with you. So, Rick, I appreciate yeah. it. Any parting thoughts? Uh, I, I had dinner with uh, a wonderful person last night, and on the way to that dinner, she asked me a question. She said, what, what drives you? And I said, it's real simple. It's the parable of the lion and the gazelle. And um, it says that when you wake up on the African plains and you're a gazelle you, or you're a lion, you know you got to run faster than the slowest gazelle, or you don't eat, you starve. <laughs> but if you're the gazelle, you know you got to wake up and be able to wake up running and run faster than the fastest, uh, fastest lion or you are dinner. Yeah. And, and, uh, so, um, you know, every morning I wake up running and sometimes I'm running at the goals of this company and, and at nine, and sometimes I, I wake up running from the lion and we spent a year living with the lion called COVID and all the wild twists and turns of, that that brought us. I just want to say thank you to each of you for deciding every day to spend your career with Benchmark and now Benchmark and United. Uh, and thank you for your commitment to excellence because you guys shine like like the North Star for a lot of real estate, a lot of companies and a lot of real estate agents around this country. Thank you for being part of our company. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Rick. And with that, we'll sign it off. And thank you all for attending. Uh, I did have a question came in that said, can, can our private conversations become Zoom calls that everybody can join? And the answer is no. <laughs> Rick and I have private conversations and you're not invited, but we'll tell you the results and it's all gonna be good. So, all right. Wait, 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 wait. I think, was that, was that question about having Cobrokes be part of us? I haven't, yeah, all of our affiliates be part of yours and my private conversations. And strategy oh, sessions well. and that sort of thing. Yeah. You don't want to see how the sausage is made. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rick, thank you so much. Have a great week, and we will see you in June in Colorado Springs. All right. Glad to be here. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. Guys. See you Bye. soon, Philip. Bye.